Welcome to our review on using resources. The first thing we really need to consider is how and why our use of energy sources has changed over time. So if we think back to what life was like going back 100 years, then it was a much smaller world. The population has grown massively in the last 100 years. So the main reason for our change in energy sources is down to this increase in a population. So that means with more people, there's more people actually needing electricity for all these different devices we've come up with and just more devices that use fuels anyway. So I've given you two pictures at the bottom there, just comparing a kitchen on the left going back to the Victorian era. So you can see there's no electricity in there whatsoever. You've got a pot over a fire, but that's about it. And then everyone's just sitting around using manual machines on the right. We have a modern kitchen, which I'm sure is a little bit more familiar to several of you who have your own kitchens at home with everyone with their own little devices. So computers, mobile phones, pads, etc. No one's really sitting there and doing things manually anymore. In the background, you can see electric kettle, electric oven. All of these have changed our energy use over time. What we've got on the graph here is just showing you how different energy sources have changed in their use over time. So one of the main energy sources that was used in the past was wood. And some areas of the world still use wood as a fuel today because it's readily accessible and it's very cheap compared to having to try to import some of these other fuels that are a lot more costly. So we can see in that graph down there that the actual biofuels, which wood is an example of, have remained pretty low and constant throughout that time. If we come to more recent times, you can see things like nuclear and hydroelectricity have seen a big increase. So that's going to be down to increased populations, increased use of devices, etc., leading to increased demands on electricity. We do have a few issues surrounding our use of these resources. Firstly, our supply of fossil fuels is finite. That means they're going to run out. We do have reserves of fossil fuels in many parts of the world that are very hard to reach. And therefore, that means that they're hard to find and hard to extract. That means the price is going to go up if we do extract them. So the harder they are to find and the harder they are to extract, the more expensive they become. The other big downside we've got of burning these fossil fuels is they release carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide contributes to climate change and the enhanced greenhouse effect. If we burn too many fossil fuels, we get a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which leads to the enhanced greenhouse effect. And that means we're also going to see some other problems. The ice caps would melt, which will lead to sea level rising and therefore flooding. We're seeing more extreme weather events. And there's also then going to be threats to food supplies because of droughts in certain areas. So because of these issues, what we've got are governments actually trying to decide what energy source would be best for them to use. And when they're doing this, there's a few things they've got to consider. They can't just change it at the drop of a hat because research says actually this would be better. They need to consider the cost of it. They need to consider the environmental impact and how long the sources will last, because it makes very little sense to trade from one thing that you've got all set up to something else if it's going to run out as well in about 60 years time. It's not a great use of money. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain the patterns and trends in the use of energy resources, giving reasons behind them.